Hello, welcome to Marty of All Trades. Many years I wanted a workbench that I could work on and use. I wanted one, I'd see them in stores, I'd see them in magazines, I'd see them on websites, but like most people, I couldn't afford them. So I decided to do what most people are gonna to have to do and that is to build it. So I took me some existing lumber that I had in my shop already, two by sixes, and made myself a nice beefy workbench. This thing is solid. Hard to pick up, why would you want to? I don't know, but it's nice, beefy. I plan to add some leg vices to it, right, a leg vise and a tail vise, a couple of vices and some other things, a shelf in the bottom. Hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe and happy woodworking. I had this yellow pine for several years, seven or eight years, probably, and decided I'd use it to make a workbench. I thought, hey, beats buying lumber. So I start cutting out the table. Right here, I'm cutting out all my lengths from all my pieces that I'm going to make up for the table. I'm going to make this in... And you'll see this in just a little bit, but I'm going to make this in three sections, mainly to fit inside my planer, but also a lot easier to handle. Here's where I'm going to use a known straight edge. I have some trim that I'm using to attach to all my boards to get one edge straight. This works really good. With used lumber, you do run the problem of a casual screw, as you see there, or a nail. I removed that and went on my merry way. And you can see on the back behind me there that I'm going to put all these together. And I'm trying to keep my grain alternated as I lay them up there. But I get some that's not turned correctly, but I'll straighten them out later. Now I'm cutting them to length, ripping them down to length. So I start out around a little, a little bit over about four and a half, four and three quarters, somewhere in there, uh, inches thick. Because I knew I was going to do a lot of planing and some hand planing as well. Here I find a washer still stuck in one of the boards. That'll wreak havoc on a saw. You have to really watch when you haven't used boards. I thought I'd get most stuff out, but anyway, I start the glue up process for the three sections of the table, the top. Got my grain alternated. <laughs>
And here we are with my plane. I'm going to plane them down. I'll get a certain thickness here. This wasn't, it's a little cumbersome to get through my planer. My planer is about 19, probably 19 years old. Yeah, it's it's ready to be replaced. But anyway, it, it done a good job on this. You can see in one of my other videos, I have my planer on wheels. Love those casters on things. And I'm going to put this bench um, on casters as well. So that really helped. I'm going to make here. I'm measuring to make sure I got the thickness. See where I'm at. Because I'm going to make sure they're all the same. And of course, I'm going to cut the length here once I get all the stuff done. Take my trusty jet. I love the Japanese saw. Took a lot of a lot of elbow grease and a lot of cutting, but it's a great saw. And then I just took my bench plane and planed it down on the ends. It's quite rewarding to use this saw the way it cuts on the pull stroke. So it's it's a very rewarding experience to use one of these saws. Oh yeah, that's right. That's smooth. And we're going to plane and plane and plane some more. Did I mention we're going to plane? Here I'm checking for any high spots or low spots with this level. And I can find them and knock them down with that plane. So now I'm time. Now it's time to glue up the feet, the legs for the table. So I'm gluing all this up. Be four legs, of course. We're going to have one glue up. Well, I'm not done planning either with my on the tabletop. I'm just going to start get the legs glued up tonight on this particular time. After they glued up, I'm going to face joint, get all those straight, and I'll run across my joiner. That's a 6 and 1 8 inch joiner. It's an old joiner. It's an old craftsman joiner. Works fine. I'd like to have a longer one, but you do what you got. Now I'm going to cut my links, my legs to length. And here I'm going to make the lap joints. I'm going to use my radial arm saw to cut most of all that wood out. And I'm going to chisel it out here in just a minute. And then use my hand plane to make that lap joint. I can't stress enough here how having a sharp chisel makes all the difference in the world. But the radial arm saw made really, really fast work of this. You could chisel it out with a chisel. That's, what, that's all you have. But my legs are going to be mortised through the top of the bench and then rest on that shoulder that you see. The legs are three two bys glued up. I just keep doing this to each leg. You can cut them on a bandsaw. I have a bandsaw. It's you can easily cut that most of that out with that. I just chose to do this method. There's probably a dozen ways you could have done this. I'm kind of fond of hand planes, so I do use those a lot. Here I'm laying out my where I want my legs to be. I came in a foot 
um, from each end. I'm laying out where I want to have my uh, mortise cut. I'm just using the shoulder to mark it out. Now here I'm using the knife to score my wood. So I'm going to use a hand drill. As you see, I drilled a couple holes or three or so already. Yeah, I could use the power drill. I have one of those. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to drill this by hand. And then chisel this mortise out. So I marked it out with a knife. So whenever I do chisel it out, the, I have a nice crisp edge. The only thing about drilling with a hand drill, a bracing bit like this, is that it's tiring. <laughs> now I've got four mortises to cut over four inches deep. You can't see this on the bottom of the bench. I actually have some small pieces of wood that I, for whatever reason, didn't video putting them on there so I wouldn't have any tear out when I go through with this drill or later when I'm chiseling. So I'm going to chisel halfway down. Yeah, that's tiring. But I'm going to chisel, start chiseling now with an old chisel. Here I'm putting on some wax in the bracing bit to make it go through a lot better. And that did help a, a tremendous amount. And we'll just go to work chiseling now. Using one of my older chisels to get most of it out. And I'll come in and clean it up real nice and neat with one of my better chisels. Trying to go through about halfway or a little more. But like I said, I have wood on the bottom, so... I can help with the tear out. This is the top of the bench. Or the, the bottom of the bench, rather. I'm sorry. This is the bottom of the bench I'm working on. And now I've already got all four holes hogged out. And I'm going to clean them up with my, my chisel here. This took a lot. A lot of chiseling here. You can see on the floor the amount of shavings. All that is from the mortise holes. But I'll appreciate the bench a lot more, I think. Yeah, I kept test fitting this piece in this mortise, trying to get the right fit, just a little too tight. I think I'd have it, and then I'd try it again, and still a little too tight. But I kept, I kept going, and I eventually get it. Because you want each leg to be a good fit. If you don't have a good fit, then you wasted your time pretty much putting the mortise and tenon. And you see, I got my legs glued in finally. Now I'm laying out the stretchers that I'm going to glue up. I'm going to lay these out and cut these to length. And I'll start gluing these up using my cordless DeWalt um, skill saw. I love that tool. It's a great tool. All my stretches will be lap joints. And later, as you'll see, I'm going to lap joint all the stretches. And then I'll use glue and screws to have the initial glue to set up. And once the screws are, or the glue is dried, rather, I'm going to remove the screws and put in three-quarter inch oak dowels. And this is the part where I'm going to glue up my stretchers. Yeah, that wasn't the best in hindsight, this wasn't the best um, 
place for me to glue these up. I don't have a good bench to that was clear anyway to work on. So I thought, yeah, these legs are in my way, but I'll deal with it. I guess I kind of have a bench. I got the top there on some sawhorses, so I guess that is a bench. And already, I can tell you, I've been at this point. I knew I'm so glad I had this workbench just to be able to do these stretches on. And again, I alternated my grain. I'm making sure they're all level and all down on my clamps. And the same idea with the clamping pressure going the opposite direction sometimes. You want to make sure they're good and flat. And I'm going to put some on the ends as well here in just a few minutes. And if they dried up, we'll remove the clamps and get ready to dress them up. These didn't require much joining at all. They were fairly straight, but I want to get the edges knocked off anyway to Give a cleaner look. Now I'm laying out where the stretches are going to go. I don't want to make any mistakes at this point. So I'm clamping everything, make sure it's level and everything's where it should be before I make a mark. And I will mark with a, a knife. Once I cut this out, I want a nice, crisp, clean, as perfect a lap joint as I possibly can get. I tend to be a little bit, I don't know, I may be OCD on a lot of things, I guess, but I, I do tend to go after the details so much. Again, I'm marking out. I use a marking knife a lot. I may use a pencil, but in the end, before I make the cuts, I'll always use a marking knife. It's much more accurate. I'm saying the depth of my um, cut right here to, to, to accept the stretch that's going to go in there. And I just use my skill saw here to knock out most of the stuff, and it'd be like soldiers in a rank here in just a few minutes. I didn't show them this video. I will here in a minute, but I just knock up the chips out and Chisel and plant it down to the fits. Had that just a hair too tight. So I'll pare it down with And again, here it's a must to have good, sharp, sharp chisels. And there are many videos. I'll make a video on sharpening chisels. There's plenty out there on people sharpening their chisels. But I'm a big fan of Paul Sellers for sure. And I highly recommend watching his videos. I've learned a lot from him. And 
and others. I've watched Jay Bates. I've watched Matt at at, at Slea, uh, Wood Whisper. I've watched a lot of those guys, and they're very good, way better than I am. I consider myself a novice. <laughs> Been doing it for years, but I still learn so much from those guys. And I just keep chiseling it out here and using my plane to get it flat and even and make sure everything's level here every which way I can. It would be better here to actually cut this, um, these stretcher, these rabbit joints, I guess you might, or lap joints. It'd be better to cut them before you install the legs. And I, I was going to do that, but I thought, well, I just wasn't exactly sure where I was going to put them. So I decided I'd make the cut after I got them, got them in. It's a lot safer for me, but I just want to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Don't want to make the cut and find out I've got to glue up more legs. See me working this plane. I'm trying to wouldn't take it off quite enough as so I want to get able to take out a little more. I'm adjusting the depth. Make short work of that. I'm trying to be conscientious of where the lap's going to go. I'll make sure I get a good flat. Two mating surfaces together real good. And I finally get them together, and I'm going to just do a little bit of planning and a little finish work here. Get thing, all the sides flush, matching up. This thing is heavy. And I'm sanding it down. I sand up to about... 320. I could have stopped at 240. Filled in with some wood putties, any imperfections on the ends, on the top. But I sand up to 320 grit. I want it to be smooth. I'm not building a piece of shop furniture, per se. I want it to look good, but I'm building a functional workbench. One that I want to use. It's going to get some dings in it and so forth, but I plan to use this, this workbench. And you just sand and sand and sand. I sand the legs, the stretchers, I sand everything. I did round over a, a chamfer, the top. And I'll take my sander and finish rounding it over just a little bit. Not too round, but just a little bit. And I spray some water here to let the water sit for about, oh, about an hour after I spray it down. That's to raise the grain, any grain, that, any fiber that would stick up, that'll come to the surface. And I can knock those down again in the sand and you get a nice smooth finish. I'm going to apply um, some boiled linseed oil to the surface of my top. I'm wiping it down with my tack cloth there. And here I'm going to put in my boiled linseed oil. I like the boiled linseed oil a lot. Um, I didn't want to stain it. <laughs> and I, I wrestled with which one to do, but I chose the boiled linseed oil to really seal the workbench up good. Keep rubbing it on. 
could go in circles several times and I'll eventually end with going with the grain. And this was this was a lot of fun putting it on. I had my gloves on, so hey, I'm just gonna just take my time and enjoy the grain, enjoy the product. And I'll put another another coat. This was a lot of fun. Put it on with my hands. <laughs> with the gloves. You can actually feel it where it needs to be going. Or any dry spots you might have missed. But you just keep putting it on. Like I used three coats. And then I'm going to come back here on after that's all dry. To use some paste wax. And really go over it. This doesn't do a lot to help as far as a finish. As far as protecting it. But. It makes everything slick, and now I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the fruits of my labor. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.